three generations of Misty Brook bred uh, dogs he's got with him. Misty Brook Esther, who is about seven months old, um, if you want to call her out. Um, we've also got Misty Brook Otter, who is about three years old now. Then we've got mother of them both, I think, uh, Misty Brook Tegan. Then we've got his young man, Mr. Brooke Connor, not Connor, I'm sorry, um, he's one of his champions, that's Mr. Brooke Morgan, who's just coming out there. Then we've got Sarah Winter at the back, Phil Fisk Golden Retriever, she's got a young dog with her, who is Gospel Ash, not Teddy, sit, sit. He is just 10 months old, we've also got her bitch, Rugby Seraphina of Phil Fisk. And her dog, Joyful Hugo of Phil Piss, who I have his son here in the ring. Eddie's also his son. We've got Adrian there with his young dog, who is Tony's Edge, Band of Gold. I have his brother with me. And we've also got Castleman's Soul Man, who's an extremely nice young dog as well. I've got with me Foggy's young Foggy's brother, Chase. Chase, Tony's Edge. I'm getting them all. So I've got a field trial champion here and a field trial winner here. So we're just going to pop the older dogs out to one side and we're going to do a little demo with our young dogs. Okay, so we just sort the dogs out. We all train our dogs as retrievers. We don't make special allowances for them being golden retrievers. But all stone dogs need to be treated and trained with kindness, which is the way we train our dogs. Sarah and I train our dogs using clickers. Chase, Chase, Chase. Richard and Adrian train their dogs slightly differently. So you'll just see some different techniques of training here. Richard's just handing his brood over. So we're just going to show you a little bit of early stages of appeal work. We've got Richard's going to bring you a mess to who is okay, six or seven months old. So he's going to do a little bit of appeal work on and off the lead. The important thing with our dogs, we only ever teach them one position. We don't do loose lead walking. We don't believe in teaching them anything else but walking in one position. So we can show them initially the position you want them to be in. They can treat that. We want them to be aware of left leg movement. So lots of left circles. Walk into them. Good. And we can just click and reward them for that. But if you start with a young puppy, allowing them any other position but heel work on your left leg, you've got something to sort out later. So just start as you need to go on. All you ever want the dog to be aware of is walking on your left leg in a heel position, which will also relate later on to them being cast out for retrieves in a good position without giving any poor sort of behavior. So lots of heel work drills, lots of left hand turns. Let the dog be aware of your left leg movement. Good. So that's all quite tedious for training, but it's all very important to get the foundations in. Right, we'll do a little bit of steadiness with them. So little Esther there is going to be at a different stage of steadiness to our slightly older dogs. We'll just get them used to seeing Retrieves thrown around them. I personally, once he sits steady to a retrieve being thrown, I'll just go forward and reward him. Show another retrieve out. Sit, sit. You don't actually need to have them in a sit for steadiness. Steadiness is steadiness, irrelevant of position. So if they want to be in stand, they can be in stand. If they're stood at heel, it's steadiness, it's irrelevant what position they're in. So good boy, just going to go forward and reward him again. So as you can see, Eddie at the top, young dog, he's being kept steady in a stand, which is actually quite a good position to teach them to be steady in when you want to actually lift them from position. If you do too much steadiness from a sit, you'll often find they'll be fixed in sit. Wait, so I'll just have him in a stand and show you that he can be steady in stand as well as in a sitting position. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Oh, that's, wobbling, yeah. so that's a little bit of steadiness. 
we can just, with the older dogs, Adrian, if you're able to throw something over the top of his head. So these dogs are just coming up on 13 months old. They're brothers, and they're both doing extremely well. Adrian has won every puppy test that dog's ever been in, beating two-year-old dogs when he was 10 months old. So he's doing extremely well. He's got a very nice young dog there. Richard's vanished. Oh, there he is. So little Esther, as you can see, the thing with golden retrievers, a lot of people think they're air scenting dogs, which they are. They've got a great ability to air scent, but we personally also teach them to ground scent. They have to be able to ground scent as well as air scent. Um, and they're in a, a very good position then. We can ground scent behind Labradors as well as have the ability to air scent behind Labradors. Um, so we do stand quite well behind Labradors when they're well trained dogs and you teach them to hold an area and put their nose to the ground. Okay everyone? So we're just going to do a little bit of shaping a hold. So what a lot of people miss out on with their dogs is actually teaching them how to hold something. You go straight into teaching the dog a retrieve and you end up with it all falling apart when they actually come to within the last two foot approaching you. So we actually prefer to teach it backwards and just let them enjoy, good boy, having something in their mouth, good boy. They don't have to be in a sitting percent with young dogs. I just want them to enjoy being in my company while holding something so there's never any pressure. Last thing you ever do with young dogs is push a retrieve into their mouth going hold it, hold it, hold it. There's no need to ever threaten them. You just treat them with kindness. Good boy. You also don't want a fight on your hands to take it off them. You, when you ask them to release, you want them to take their mouth off it, dead, rather than you grapple the dog to lift it off them. What you can also do, we do use treats, Sarah and I, some people don't. Um, people think, dead, treats will ruin your dog, it'll make your dog drop a retrieve. What will happen if I get a treat out? If he happened to drop that, the treat will go away and he won't have earned it because he's dropped it. You want him to learn. As long as you're holding that, that's what's going to earn you that reward. Dead. And he can have it. If he was to drop the retrieve as soon as I put my hand in my pocket for a treat, sorry, the treat's gone away and the dummy's gone away. You don't get anything. His favourite thing is actually his little toy. So I'm going to get little Nemo out, which is his favourite thing. I'm going to waggle that around. Good boy. Good boy. Dead. Dead. So he gets Nemo in exchange for holding his dummy. Now Nemo is his retrieve toy, so that's his reward. He can do what he wants with Nemo. So he likes to go between my legs with Nemo for some reason. I don't know why, that's just what he likes to do. So he's allowed to do that with Nemo. As long as when I want Nemo back, hello, he'll give it me. <laughs> Chase. Good boy. Dead. Dead. So what we're also doing there, to move on from that, you can see the guys are doing it already. Pop a retrieve between you and the dog. You don't need to send your dog out to get your retrieve. You teach it backwards, like I say. So dog comes in to pick the retrieve when you're learning as young dogs. Chase, come. Clever boy. Clever boy. So, there's Richard done. You done. So what we're going to do now, Sarah and Richard are just going to show how we start teaching a little bit of line work. So by line work, I mean training them how to take a blind. It's something I drum into my dogs from the start. Line work, line work, line work. When I say run away from my hand, you run away from my hand in a straight line. Um, just careful if that's their dog you've got there, Steve. Um, so, what Richard and Sarah are doing, they've got target dummies, by target dummies, a nice big white dummy, if you can stand it up on end, place it so they can see it, you're going to then walk the dog away from it, line them out, what you want to see in a response with the dog is them focusing on the white dummy, 
So not looking at your hand, looking through your hand at the target dummy in the distance. You also don't want any push behaviour from your dog. So if you're aware that it's saying to you, send me, send me, send me, and nagging you, it does not get the retrieve. Um, with young dogs to start with, I actually scoop them. So rather than teach steadiness, you just create steadiness by restraining them a little bit with your arm. Again, if you get any sort of push behaviour from them, you go and pick it up yourself. So Richard's doing a little bit of a drill where he'll go and pick the retrieve out himself so that Esther doesn't think they're all for her. Sarah's just put her memory out behind. She's just turned him, thrown the scene retrieve in the opposite direction. She then wants to get focus from Eddie, looking at that white dummy. She's going to send him on his blind word for that and then she'll probably let him have the scene retrieve. She might not, at times you'll probably go and pick the scene retrieve up yourself. But what you're wanting the dog to learn is when you point in that direction and give him the word, which means you haven't seen this, run in a straight line away from me, I'll tell you when you've got there or you'll come across it. Obviously the dogs have seen these at the moment, so it's, it's uh, people get confused thinking it's a scene retrieve, but it's a memory scene. Eventually you're building up for them to understand what it means to point in one direction and just run away from my arm. The Richard's baby is still a puppy, so he's not insisting on any delivery at times. He's just got on his knees and let her come up for a cuddle, because um, it's all got to be enjoyable for them. Okay, so what? we're going to bring out... Get off your phone, Adrian. <laughs> So we're going to pop, Adrian, if you pop your memory down in that corner, I'll go up to this corner. So we're just going to extend from what the puppies are doing, because our dogs are that little bit more advanced. So rather than walk them back, back on our foot scent, we're going to place a memory down still, but we're going to walk around the flank of the arena rather than on the route that we want the dog to take. And they should still line out and pick out the white dummy off our hands and come back to retrieve it. So we're still going to stand them up on end. Just alert to it. Hopefully it'll stand on end. That length come away from it. Good boy. So we're just going to walk around, send them from the middle with our backs to each other. Good boy. Okay, so if you took, you're going to pick yours to start with. So, we're not going on the route we've walked. So wait for the dog to boy. Get on. Wait for the dog to look through my hand at where he needs to run to. Good. Good boy. Good. Good boy. I actually praise them looking through my hand because I want them to acknowledge. Looking through my hand, not at my hand, is what I want. The direction you're looking in is the direction we want them to run to. So I'm just going to replace this and Adrian and I are going to do the same again but I'm going to send for his and he's going to send for mine. No. So we're starting to just build on their blind retrieves. Obviously you quite quickly build up on distance as well. Thank you. Thank you. When you're building distance on this exercise, you always move the dog further and further away from the dummy, not the dummy further away from the dog. So the dog's always going to a familiar place. So we're just going to meet in the middle, have our backs to each other. Adrian's going to try and pick out mine, and I'm going to try and pick out Adrian's. Okay? So we'll wait for to focus. Here, here. Get on. <laughs> out, 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 out. So he's he's not noticed that he's going to give in. Come on, check, check, check. Good boy. I'm going to get a little bit closer so he can pick it out. Good boy. He's a bit overwhelmed. Good boy, good boy. So he saw it that time. 
So no pressure put on them at all. Good lad. Good boy. Good boy. So if they can't pick it out from the distance they're at, just take them a little bit closer and then they'll be sorted. Right, so we're going to just pick the big dogs up again now. We're going to set up a little finale drive. So just come and get my Steve's enjoying having a handful of golden retrievers. <laughs> this is my so I was just getting a little bit stressed because he was being held by my husband <laughs> and being strangled. But just the stress of being held with a strange dog. Right, we're going to have a little mini drive. We've got two areas of brashings either side of the arena. Sit. Right, just go and get down there. Where's Joe and Sean? Right, so Steve and Andy are going to do a little mini drive. We've got a fence up in the top corner and we've got a fence in the bottom corner. We're all going to head up towards the middle of the arena. Have you? Got it? So we're going to have a little mini drive. Oh, chase, 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 come here. Chase, come here. Oh, sit. Yeah, so Steve's going to throw in the bottom corner, wherever he's gone. There he's. Andy, is Andy there? So we've got. Okay, if we start the drive. Right, we. We've got retrieves going into the top corner over the little fence, so they're all being turned to see that. Make lots of noise, Andy. Okay, the bottom corner, we've got another drive going on there. We're having four in each area. So we want the dogs all to be steady to the drive. And again, mark. Okay. Right, we've been told, Sarah, do you want to do this retrieve? We've been told, can you sit? That there is a bird that needs picking in the brushing ahead of us. So the dogs have both seen those drive either side. There's a bird that needs picking out of those brushings. Good, well done, little Riley. That was me on the speaker. Does anyone else want to pick one of those runners out of the brushing ahead of us? So Mom, she's going to go and pick that. Good boy. He just needs to get into the brushing. Right side of the wind, there we go. He's touching something there, put his head in. Richard, do you want to pick one off the drive, either to your right or your left? So Richard's going to send Tegan, Tegan, now you're going to send Morgan. Tegan has qualified for the Trever Championship, she's just one win off short of being a field trial champion as well, which would be Richard's field trial, third field trial champion. Sarah, do you want to pop down to the left hand drive? I'm going to settle down a bit now, just getting a bit, a bit worried about the whole situation. Good boy. Good boy. Good. I'm going to send one of mine to the top chair. I wish I'd asked what, that's naughty, that's actually an eliminating fault if you did that in a field car, so they can all be naughty, we've been very naughty today, good. Right, so do you want to pop, so we're going to send Riley back to the brushings ahead, but we're going to stop him and cast him right or left to the drive, whichever one she chooses to. 
we'll just do a little bit of control here. So we've decided we don't want that one he picked before. We want him to cast left back over that fence to the earlier drive. Good boy. Adrian, do you want to do the same? So Monty's already been to that far retrieve. He's going to be sent back to there, stopped en route and cast right to the drive. Good boy. Very nice boy. Over. Good boy. So I think we've picked three out of there now. Andy's going to keep topping it up if he can. There's one left in there. But I'm just going to pop my champion straight ahead. Get on. The boy. This is my my second field trial champion. My other one's eight years old. Been left at home. Um, both my champions were made up by three years old. So a lot of people think children's are slow to mature, but actually, if you train them correctly, they're not. Um, there's one left ahead. You want to go to the, one of the trees over here? There's four in there, so there's one left in there. So we'll have a little hunting exercise. Chase me. This is little Tegan. Tegan is eight years old now, I think, so she's still fit as a flea. Good girl. There should still be one left in there. Good girl. I think we put four in there, didn't you, Andy? Yeah. There we go. Right, so we've got one left in the right-hand drive. I think we've got two left in the bottom drive, Steve. Is that correct? Right, what we'll do now, Sarah, if you want to pop a dog, you're going to pop Safi up for the right-hand one. So this is little Safi. She won a novice trial this season, so she's going to go into open this year. Nice little dog. Good girl. She's hopefully going to be put in pup next year. She's got one. She's still hunting, Sarah, so there we go, Nick, yeah. She's got an American ho husband in this country waiting in a freezer. <laughs> right, what we'll try now, Adrian, if you want to pop your dog towards that forward brushing, there's nothing left in there, let him have a little hunt, and we're going to have to call him out of there, stop him, and decide to pick one off the left-hand drive instead. So this is just to show dog can hunt an area, hunt an area, just see if there's something still there. Let him get in there, have a little climb around. Is there anything in there? Let him have a good look. Once we've decided, no, there's nothing in there. Then we can call him out. Right, we've checked that out. There's nothing left in there to pick, so we're going to stop him and cast him back to the drive. Good boy. Good lad. Good boy. We've got one left in there, Steve. I'll just pop. Good Sit. Just pop multi pants in there. Go. Go. Get over. Sit. Get over. Get over. My dogs have never heard my voice coming out of a speaker before, so that's going to be a bit weird. <laughs> good boy. Yes, that's everything picked. I think we're about done for time looking at my watch, are we? Hello? Okay, let's just have a little straightforward mark for Eddie the puppy. So Andy's going to throw a little mark. Lots of noise, Andy, so Eddie picks it out. So Eddie... He's just going to be held onto by a little handily just to make sure that he's nice and steady and calm. He can't see. And he's blending very well with the crowd. Good boys. Good boys. So that's just a nice little straightforward retrieve for the puppy. Here, here. I'll just do the same with my puppy, Steve. If it's Steve, if you've got a dummy on you. Not over the fence. Chase. So this is Chase. 
He was just 12 months old. <laughs> Just showing a little bit of steadiness with a pack of dogs. Good boy. Part of my naughty championship. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Good. So if we take a team of dogs out picking up, they need to be able to be selected by send my dogs by their name. So if there's a group of dogs by my side and one of them has to go and take a retrieve, I just call its name and it's released to go and pick the retrieve. Um, Steve got off very lightly this year, he was going to have to handle my champion in a grass trial for me while I handled another dog, but they've cancelled it so he feels ever so lucky that he's not having to handle a golden retriever. Um, so thank you very much for coming to watch us. We, um, as I say, we, we love our breed. Um, they do, if you like the look of them, they do need some sort of a working life. Um, they're high energy as you can see. Um, they do need something to do. They're very good agility dogs. Sarah does a little bit of agility with Riley. Um, they're very good agility dogs. They've done very well in obedience. Um, some, I've got a client that comes and does working trials with her dog and has competed very successfully at working trials and she's now discovered doing gun dog work with her. So they're an extremely versatile breed. Um, but they do need to have something to do. They enjoy a little bit of work. So whatever you decide to do with them, they need some work. Um, thanks very much for coming to see us um, and we're back again tomorrow doing the same again. We're actually parading a couple of our dogs in the main arena later. There's a display of lots of different gun dogs in the main arena at 1.30 I think. So we'll be back there about 1.15, 1.30. Okay, thank you very much indeed. Ladies and gentlemen, can you show your appreciation for the working golden retriever team please?